says, when I was seven years old, my family was out growing our house, and my parents looked for something large enough to accommodate what eventually grew to be a brood. A gang is probably a more accurate term of 12 kids. The family lived in that house for over 50 years, and it was sold after our parents had both passed away. My siblings and I visited home after the years and years had passed, and we took our children with us. It was an old, large house, and the people who sold it to us had built it themselves from a kit they had ordered from Sears and Roebuck in 1927. My oldest child, uh, a daughter, loved visiting Grandma and Grandpa. The house was usually filled with cousins and happy noises. I was quite surprised then that she came to me one morning when she was five. She begged me to let her sleep in a different room rather than my old room. When I asked her why, she said, Those kids are noisy, and they keep asking me to play with them. I can't sleep when they're in there. I chalked it up to childless imagination, but arranged a room for her on a different floor. There were no future problems, and the incident was forgotten for a time. My oldest son had been sleeping in my old room when visiting the family place, but at the age of five, decided that he would rather sleep in a different room, saying that he didn't like my old room. He didn't give a specific reason, but there were other rooms available, so he moved, and life went on. A few years passed, and our third child, another boy, reached the age of, you guessed it, five, when he announced that my old room was creepy and that he could not sleep there because those kids were bothering him. I had grew been passed from my daughter to her brothers and simply rearranged sleeping plans to appease them. Well, okay, to shut them up. Since neither I or my siblings had ever been bothered by these entities, not even strange sounds or voices, I didn't give the batter much thought until the next morning. I was helping my mother with the breakfast cleanup. We were chatting about the children and when I began to tell her about my son had changed bedrooms and mentioned the coincidence of having all three report what I had thought was a tale of fabricated things by their brothers and sisters. My mom sighed, wiping a plate with a dish towel. Those kids can be annoying sometimes, as I tried to wrap my head around this new information. Ghost in our house? How could we not have noticed? Why didn't mom tell us? She went on, but their mother seemed nice. Some background. After talking to my mother, a few things about my childhood became clear. I had heard noises and voices, seen shadows all my life, but with a family of 12 and nearly always a baby or two in the household, any sound I heard were soon to be made by a family member. When objects appeared in the wrong place or couldn't be found or more likely were broken, there was always a brother or a sister to blame. Doors opened or closed and the a rustling noise and or cold drafts were attributed to the nearest neglectful child. Since the shadow people had always been there, I assumed that everyone saw them, so they were hardly worth thinking about. The first night of my life that I stayed alone overnight in the house was when I was 16. I slept very light that night. I saw no signs of our ghostly family or heard voices drifting from the direction of the upstairs bedrooms. Did I go up to investigate? No. I huddled in my bed listening to noises that until that night I had taken to be ordinary house noises. Old stairs creaking as the house settled, windows rattling in the wind. There was no wind, not even a breeze. Finally, I had to admit to myself that I may have an actual experience. 
The footsteps I was hearing were the same kind and sound as human steps, with the sound of feet being dragged across the wood, the carpet, the ceramic, in an order that I could interpret as parents' bedrooms to be childhood bedrooms, titled bedrooms, and finally to the hallway that would lead the stairway into my room on the first floor. The sound of the refrigerator door opening and closing, the soft tinkling of a piano key, give me a clue that my room might be next to our visitors. I prepared to make a swift exit through the French doors and out through the rose garden. The appearance of several shadows in my room gave extra encouragement and I was out of there. Fortunately, it was an easy walk, scamper, sprint to my friend's house across the street. I spent the rest of the night in a modern, quiet, blessed, unhaunted house. I woke up the next morning convinced that the events in the night before had been the product of my unstable nervousness or being alone at night for the first time. My memory of that night faded and was eventually forgotten. The ghost had never been any trouble. We hadn't even noticed them, except for Mom. Our grandmother had been a medium, so Mother had no fear of spirits and was well known for her psychic abilities, which also had been inherited by a few of our children. So it was a small matter to her to have a few extra guests. If my kids and their cousins were going to be in this house, though, the shadow people would have to be evicted and told to stay away. The kids and their mother were left alone and were never a real bother. A few windows left open, an occasional smashed face, and a bit of nocturnal piano practice. We sold the house a few years ago to a nice couple who reported they had very little disturbance. I've been told that I attract spirits, spirits, which may be true. A few years ago, I rented a house from a woman who told me that her mom had died in a back bedroom and before then had left her room only to go to the bedroom or the kitchen. I used to see a shadow moving between the bedroom and the bathroom and the kitchen and had the impression that her name was Teresa. I had always assumed that since I had been told by a landlady that mother was imagination and entity based on what should told me. One day, a friend who was visiting my house for the first time asked me if my house was haunted. I looked toward the bathroom in time to see a familiar figure glide past. Before I could say anything, my friend, who had never exhibited any uh, psychic ability, asked, Is her name Teresa? Years ago, I belonged to frequently discuss matters related to psychic phenomena. One of the members frequently showed psychic ability, but none of us practiced dismissing psychic demonstrations as parlor tricks that could even uh, leave us open to spiritual attack. One day, a member called our house to speak to me, but I was out. When my husband gave me the message that Alex called, I must have looked confused, so he said, You know Alex? Long black hair, glasses, very pretty. Now it was his turn to look confused, since he had never seen Alex and had no way of knowing what she looked like. Before retirement, I worked for several museums, historical uh, homes, and quite a few lighthouses. My specialty, yeah, most are haunted. I have stories, but don't want to identify them. She says, sorry. Hope you enjoy the story, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.